and once we got the report back from the orbiting aircraft that we did not have an electrical electrical potential, all of our other all of our minimums were satisfied. We therefore d decided to proceed with the launch as scheduled, and we did do. And of course, we feel that we are on uh, on route to a successful mission with uh, TLI planned for two hours and 47 minutes after liftoff, and that is still our plan. Now, uh, we did have, at uh, approximately 35 or 36 seconds after liftoff, we experienced a transient that uh, 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 overloaded the fuel cells and uh, caused them to go off the line. Now, once this was done, the entry bat batteries in the command module took over the system. However, they are at operating at a lower voltage than the fuel cells do, and as a re result of that, we had a temporary, momentary loss of, uh, of certain of the equipment in the spacecraft. We have since uh, getting into orbit made systems checks, and every system that we have checked seems to be working perfectly, and our present plan is to perform TLI as scheduled. I guess that's all I have to say in the way of a general statement. Thank you, Walt. Tom, do you have a comment? Well, um, we kept the crew advised completely on the launch uh, countdown status, all the factors of the weather, and at the time when they lost uh, the three fuel cells and the two AC buses uh, in the spacecraft, a lot of lights come on and the warning uh, sounds go off. I think Pete Conrad uh, and the whole crew should be really commended for keeping a cool head there and uh, reacting just like they should since the uh, our own uh, instrument unit went out and started to spin on him. However, he was looking at the rate gyros as the backup instrument, made his own analysis real fast and said, let's press right on. Uh, at that time, then uh, Al Bean was able to reset the fuel cells and uh, by the t actually by the time that uh, they got past staging, they had the AC buses back on the line working one, two, three, four. I think this also brings out the point that when everything uh, just went boom like that suddenly as far as the loss of power and all the other indications uh, is an example of why we have experienced test pilots flying these vehicles. Uh, the latest uh, information, uh, everything looks good. Dick Gordon had uh, the platform realigned as soon as they hit darkness over Africa started it and it came into darkness at 32 minutes. All the systems looks good. We've run a series test besides uh, what's normally uh, done. Everything looks great, and it looks like we're all go for TLI. Okay, before questions, I mentioned uh, 15 minutes. We understand from Houston that they'll be coming up with air ground at 45 minutes past the hour on the uh, Australian path. Now, if you people want to continue this conference, this means we would not receive the information from Houston. It would be taped and passed on. Now, do you want to do that, or do you want to uh, terminate and hear the pass? We've still got about five minutes. I'm trying to point out we'll be glad to try to answer more questions, but we can't interfere with the mission at the same time. We've got about three minutes left. We'll take Mr. Partner over here. Uh, I'd like to ask two quick questions. First, Conrad says he thinks it was hit by lightning. And, 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 do you agree that that would cause this boom that you talk about, Tom? The second is, will this outage uh, affect the lunar module? Well, first of all, I think it's only speculation. Uh, the Saturn right now, the data in the Saturn instrument unit did not show any glitches at all, and it's only speculation. Vibration, as you go out, could have, could have unseated a relay. It's only speculation. I think we have to look at the data. Uh, it looks like uh, everything else is, is go, and uh, I don't see any problems. Does that answer the question? Well, well, can you tell whether it was lightning or not by looking at the data? I think we're pretty certain that it was not lightning. If the vehicle had been struck by lightning, the damage would have been quite severe rather than have a, uh, a momentary dropout. The thing that really hurt us was the fact that the uh, fuel cells went off the bus, the entry batteries were not able to maintain voltage at the same level, and as a result of that, we lost our AC power. It was all the consequence of the fact that uh, we had the transient that uh, made the fuel cells go off the line, and everything happened as a consequence of that one fact. Also, we, from this fact, I think it's significant that the computer is probably the most sensitive item you have in the whole spacecraft, and the erasable memory was not hurt one bit. 
Now, we, we are doing our best at this time to attempt to clarify that whole situation. We have people looking over data, and as soon as it got, obviously, uh, uh, Pete Conrad did make those remarks, and uh, nobody has been able to show it yet at this time. We're looking over the data. It's an obvious question that you all want answered, and so do we, and we're doing our best to get it. As soon as we can get clarification on that, we'll let you know. Rudy, you want to go ahead, Ted. Uh, is it possible that whatever caused this could affect the limb in any way? Of course, it's uh, it's uh, it's possible. Uh, I can't say that that it wasn't. Uh, we intend to get into the limb uh, after TLI and uh, make an early check of the systems to establish the uh, the integrity of the vehicle. We do not we do not feel that anything has happened to the limb. That mean you'll power up the limb, or you aren't supposed to power that up till you get into? No. Uh, all we'll do is we'll go in and uh, and check uh, switch settings and circuit breaker settings. You have two data Ready? points. Saturn IU was in great shape. Now the, the, the spacecraft is in great shape. The limbs in between, and so from that things were looking good. Rudy, over here, we'll try to get as many as you can right here in this row. Rudy, uh, Tom, was there a momentary loss of uh, voice communication? I don't think there was any momentary loss of voice communication. He called out right away, I've got AC bus one and two and all, and all like that. So there was no voice communication loss. Right up here, Mr. Selstead. Right, next row, right in there. There were two, two flashes of lightning parallel to the launch vehicle at the time of liftoff, which we could see with from here. I was wondering if you saw them and if you could identify what they were. I was looking at the console myself. I didn't see him. Houston is coming up at this point. We'll have to hold here for a moment. Let's see how long the pass is. If uh, you tell me can't for a few minutes, let's see what happens. Otherwise, we'll call it up. Point in time was approximately 36 seconds after liftoff. 11.22. I haven't got an exact 11.22, and according to figures I have, we lifted off uh, 670 millis. In other words, 11.22 and... Uh, 0.67 seconds. How about preparations all on schedule exactly? Uh, yes, I can give you those numbers if you'd like to have them. We had, uh, as I said, we had uh, a little less than seven tenths of a second uh, off nominal liftoff time. Uh, S1C uh, center engine cutoff was exactly on time. Outboard engine cutoff of the first stage was uh, seven tenths of a second uh, after nominal. Uh, S1, C, S2 separation occurred seven tenths of a second uh, after nominal. S2 ignition occurred 1.7 seconds after nominal. S2 center engine cutoff, which is by command, incidentally, that was seven tenths of a second after nominal. The S2 outboard engine's cutoff occurred 1.1 seconds early. S2, S4B separation occurred uh, one second early. Now, these times are all well within uh, what we've done on any other mission before as far as our performance is concerned. Well, we'll have those numbers for you. Go ahead, Mark. Mr. Caprian, uh, something I don't quite understand. You had until 10 minutes of four to lift off today. You've got the hybrid trajectory, which you can play around with. You had, in effect, plenty of time why did you decide to go at 11.22 a.m. in view of what you admit is was unpredict were unpredictable weather predictions? Because, we, because of the fact that the weather was unpredictable, we had no assurance that the weather would be any better. Uh, we had some indications that it might be deteriorating. Uh, we were getting uh, on uh, almost a, uh, a, a constant basis a uh, report that said that it's going to look better in the next 10 minutes, then it says, no, no, it's going to look a lot worse. Once you go, go into a hold, it, uh, it's a lot harder to get going again. And once we were able to establish within the last 15 minutes, and uh, when we had the report from the Araya aircraft that they did not see any lightning, we did not measure any uh, potential gradient, and the reports were that uh, the turbulence was extremely mild, uh, we met all of the requirements of our mission rules and saw no reason to hold. We're coming up on TLI. I'm going to take three more questions. Over here first, he's been waiting patiently, Mary and BK, and we'll have to cut it off. These gentlemen want to get back, and I'm sure you also want to hear TLI. Go ahead, uh, sir. Colonel Stafford, as an astronaut, would you have preferred to wait this morning 
And uh, if that does turn out to have been lightning or a static discharge, what was the order of risk involved? Okay, if I'd been on top of the booster, I would have wanted to go this morning under those same conditions because this front over here was not supposed to move in. It's awful hard to predict this. Not to, I'm going to drive the weathermen. They have a rough job. They do a good job. And back and forth like that, four hours later, it could have still been the same thing. Then we had to scrub the next month. So as far as the risk, we have all these real sophisticated instruments all over the Cape for the potentials, and these were registering down way below any limits. So I don't... So as far as we could predict, there was no uh, risk going. I've flown through lots of weather in my life. Okay, Mary. Uh, Tom, two questions. Uh, what other causes could it be besides the lightning or this vibration causing a relay to fall out? Uh, do you have any other suggestions? And also, secondly, if there is any problem in the limb systems caused by whatever caused this other problem, what would you do? Uh, would you... Uh, loop the moon, come back, or try for some photography around the moon, or just what? No, uh, I think, again, Mary, it's, it's way too early to speculate on what caused it. It could have been a pure mechanical failure. And again, people like they saw a couple of bolts of lightning, evidently, but I'd hate to say that lightning caused that dropout. There's so many things that could have caused it. And this is what the agency has been noted for as a thorough investigation. That's what we don't have. And so it's just speculation now. Now, as far as if the, the limb, the limb was in a pretty quiescent state. The only current going into that is just the heaters for the pippers on the IMU. And I can't imagine that they would have any problem at all. And we do plan to go into the limb early. If we'll go through TLI. If the limb it turns out to be no good, we'll go into a photo mapping mission to bootstrap for our follow-on landing sites. Okay, BK. Uh, Colonel Stafford, you said you were looking at the console and didn't see the lightning. Did anyone in the flying room report seeing the, the lightning that we observed from the site here? Uh, not to me. N nobody I mentioned heard, that to I, me. I heard no uh, report of any sight of uh, We had lightning. quite a few people looking out after liftoff and, uh, you know, after the consoles, and uh, none of them was reported to me that they saw it. I, there were some people looking at it with glasses. I heard nobody say that it was lightning as such. There were... What some things that might have been seen, I know some people in the control center thought was concerned with the fire and the flame. And that is the information we have right now. Really? Well, look, I told you at the start, we're going to, as soon as we get any information on what this is about, we'll be glad to relay it on to you. You keep on asking and asking and speculating, so we're trying to give you the information we have at the time. I'll tell you, as an old aircraft accident investigator, if you have 100 witnesses, you're going to have 100 answers, so fine. We're going to see TLI. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.